Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I am on a quick video this week just to announce a fun project that I'm doing. So if you watch the channel very often, uh, you probably know I usually get involved with the People's Choice Top 200 list, and that's a list that's put together by Kevin Erskine. It's a huge celebration within the solo gaming community every year. It's absolutely fantastic, and I'm just so grateful to Kevin for everything he gives the community. That said, every single year I complain that all of the war and historical games keep falling down the list. <laughs> <laughs> and while I totally understand that, you know, it's the people's choice, I wanted to maybe get a people's choice list of games that are more in the end of solo gaming that I personally prefer. So being a woman of action, I have teamed up with Brant from Armchair Dragoons. So he and I uh, have created a Google form that is collecting people's top five solo historical games. And I'd really love it if you contributed because we're going to generate a top 20 solo like historical games list from that data. And I'm really, really excited about what we're all communally going to pick. So the reason we're calling it a historical games list is because people like to nitpick about what exactly a war game is. And I wanted to kind of give us like a broader set of definitions to work with. So what I mean by a historical game is really anything that engages seriously with history. So it can be a traditional war game. It can be something that's more like a twilight struggle. It could be something that's not actually about war at all, but it's historical. Basically anything that really engages with historical subject matter would count for this. And in terms of solo games, what we mean by solo is, you know, also within the wargaming community, especially, there's a tendency to be willing to play games solo without an official solo mode. Uh, a lot of wargamers, if the game is open information, will actually play multiple sides like against themselves. And so we also wanted to honor that. So by solo, we really just mean a game that you play by yourself. And as long as you enjoy playing this game on your own um, and it's historical, then it would count for the list. So we are really, really excited about what we'll get. You know, I've seen some of the preliminary data. There have been a lot of submissions so far. Uh, we're very happy with it. But of course, you always want more because we want the best possible top 20 list. So if you're interested in this project and you want to contribute, uh, I have links to the Google form in the show notes below. And I would absolutely love it if you told us what your top five historical games are that you play by yourself. And then... Um, the form is going to close on August 31st at noon Eastern time. So you've got a bit of time to think about it, uh, but you know, not too much. Don't forget. And once the form closes, we're going to do some number crunching. Well, Brant's going to do some number crunching because he's a hero. Thank you, Brant from Armchair Dragoons. And then we're going to do some videos and a geek list and all that publishing and then commenting on the results. So again, if you're interested in the project, please fill out the form. Uh, please stay tuned for what we're going to come up with. I'm very, very excited about what this list will bring. And I'm hoping it'll just be a really cool celebration of some games that don't always get as much time in the mainstream sun. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, ask questions, fill out the form. And most of all, happy gaming.